This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Move forward as long as the painter object can move in the direction it is facing. Okay, so we have no code here right now. I hit run, nothing will happen. All right, so I will encourage you to use the resources available to you. One of the resources is previous bubbly thingies, right? So I'm going to click on this one as an example. Here I am. And now I can take a look. What am I missing? Okay, so I have my painter here, Jesse. We're instantiating our painter. I currently don't have that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a painter or instantiate a painter object. And so I do that by saying the name of the class. And then I have to create my painter. Uh, Carlo will be the name of my painter this time. And painter Carlo is going to be equal to new painter. And the reason I'm doing this is this is the uh, class. So this tells the computer, hey, I have this new variable, Carlo. Carlo is set to be equal to what? The painter class. The class that has all the functionality of uh, move forward, turn left, so on and so forth. What's the data type of Carlo? Well, it's the painter class. All right, now I can start doing operations. Now, it wants me move forward as long as the painter object can move in the direction it's facing. Let's first see if the quote unquote paint, yep, there it is. Okay, so as long as I can move forward, I want to. Again, I'm going to go back to my previous bubble here and use this as an example. Let's see, what could be something that they use that I might be able to. So as long as Jesse is on the bucket, which this would mean while Jesse's on the bucket, it, Jesse will keep taking paint again and again and again. It's a loop. Okay, well, what's this one? Jesse can move. So while or as long as Jesse can move, what do they have Jesse do? Move and paint. Wait a minute. This sounds really useful, right? I want to move forward as far as I can. So I'm going to try to do that while, boom, and then my painter is not Jesse. I named my own Carlo. And I'm going to say can move. Make sure I get the casing right with capital M and then curly braces. All right. So with my curly brace, keep in mind this is a loop. Everything in between this brace and this brace. So right here, all of this stuff will keep running as long as my statement here is true. What is the statement? I'm asking the computer this question. Hey, hey, you computer, can Carlo move? And right now, nothing is blocking Carlo. So this would be true, right? And if this is true, whatever code I had in here would get executed. If this was false, when well, once it's executed, I'll take one step forward. So now I'm here. And then it hits the bottom and it goes, okay, got to go back up. Joop. Can, Car can Carlo move? Computer goes, I don't know. Let me check. Zoop, looks at this spot. Well, yeah, there's nothing blocking Carlo. It says yes or true. This is true. And once again, bloop. If this is move, I would take one step forward again. Plop. Now it hits the bottom back to the top. And I say, all right, how about now? Can Carlo move? And it goes, nah. let me see. Zoop. And if I am facing this way, this would be false, right? I'd run my face right into this cone. I don't want to do that to my face. If this is false, the code inside of it does not run and it drops to the line below. So let's see if it works. Oh, what did I mess up? Oh, move, right? So, and the great thing about code is test often. Carlo.move, right? Carlo is the painter object and I'm using the object to run this method, which is looking good. Let's see. Yeah. Cool. So conditionals are really powerful. Conditional loops, like a while loop, super important. Um, I'm excited to see what we do with it. Onward.